name is Kid Galahad, my real name is Abdul Barry Awad. I'm originally from a place called Yemen, which is the Middle East. I was born in a place called Doha, Qatar. And I moved over here to Liverpool, England, when I was five years old. Lived there until I was ten, then moved to Sheffield, England. And then met Brendan Ingle, and that's when I started boxing. I was always in and out of trouble as a youngster and um, I went to a certain gym to get a bit big because I was a skinny kid and there was a boxing ring in there and me and my friend Tristan Moss we used to go in there and just you know just fiddle about mess around uh, mess about for about two weeks and then um, I was at the local mosque one day and I seen a guy called Prince Nassim Hamed I, I went up to him and I started Naz I want to be a champion like you turn around to me because if you want to be a champion you need to go to a gym I find a guy called Brendan Ingle his gym's in Winkerbank and he'll take you into a champion I know him, told my mum went looking for the gym and the rest is history when you say out of here just being British Commonwealth European and world champions on a regular basis over a number of years so there's nothing to stop him becoming world champion and making a fortune. We say, look who's come through here, Errol Bomber Graham. Ryan Anderson, instead of going to prison, come in here, become a champion, and then become a prison officer. And he runs one of the prisons now. Sport and music brings everybody together. When they say in here they come in, they've learned how to box, they've learned how to dance, and for the one they have to show it, it's me to get ready. Go, go, go. The people used to think you were mad. When he come in here, get young lad, he says, You think he's going to do it? Since he'd probably finish up British, Commonwealth, European, and world champion. It's like everything else, it's time and patience and putting it in. And look at the integration in here. Sport brings everybody together. With the blacks, whites, you travel around the world. I went, I always I collected stamps. They always go to the world. Brendan doesn't train you now, does he? No, he, he uh, you know, he's still a mentor. Um, he still has a, a lot of influence in me. But um, pad work in most of the training now is Dominic Ingle. But he's, to be honest with you, he's been training me alongside, you know, Brendan since I was about 13. Anyway, I've known them for a very long time, you know. Um, it's like, uh, they're like father figures to me. And you know, when you spend so much time with someone, uh, you know, you grow a relationship with them. I've spent more time with the Ingle family, with Brendan Ingle and Dominic Ingle, than my own family. That's a real close. Yeah, so like, you know, I've been all over the world with them. Um, you know, they've, um, they've took me all over. I remember when I was a kid in that. Um, when I was about 14, 15, I think Julian Witter was boxing for the world title and Dominic Ingle, me, Dominic and John went over, you know, to, you know, Julian was fighting for the world title and I went over, that was my first time and like, you know, it's a bit, when you're 14 year old, 15 year old, can you go into America, you're like, wow, look at this. You've always supported Kel a lot as well, haven't you? So I see you a lot like... Coming yeah, out with Kel when he's got his fights as well. Yeah, you know, um, known Kel for a very long time. Um, even when Kel boxed for the world title, I, you know, we went out. I went out there with him, me, Dominic, and Kel. Um, so you know, we're a very close uh, family.
you know, I can't wait. It's going to be, you know, ITV backing, backing us and uh, putting a lot of money into this, into these shows, and uh, just can't wait now to, to get in there and perform. It's a great fight. He's a good competitor. He's undefeated. You know, he's beat a few good kids from England, and uh, it's going to be a hard night's work. But I should be able to do a job in him. This is another fight closer to where I want to get, and that's become a world champion. And uh, hopefully after this, you know, because this Dennis kid is very highly ranked, and uh, he'll put me straight in the mix. My name is Danny Wilson, I'm a strength conditioning coach for boxing science uh, at Sheffield Army University. I'm doing strength conditioning training with uh, Kid Galahad. Uh, we've just been doing some stretching just after his spar there. And stre stretching is really important because you know Barry's got a really, really intense training program and his muscles will be uh, producing a lot of force and shortening all the time. So it's important for him to stay uh, loose, stay fresh, so he doesn't pick up any injuries and he's able to move a lot better in the ring. And as well, uh, just after his spa, it helps him recover, so he's, uh, he's able to be fresh uh, for the next session. Okay, then the day you got to make sacrifices, haven't you? And you don't want to make sacrifices. <laughs> what are you <laughs> 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 He wants to go and fanny about with his beard yeah. and go on holiday. See all no mushy mushy. Yeah. yeah. No tracksuits. Is she paying your bills for you? No, no. Exactly. I'm Me, I'm paying your bills, not here. <laughs> he wants to go and go on holiday with, doesn't he? Look, I need a break. I've been. Just saying, <laughs> in, in this game, yeah. in this game, you know what I'm saying? If you want to get to the top, you know, you got to do extra and do more numbers and put in extra graft than everyone else. I hope we're getting all of this. <laughs> it's really on on the camera. It's really nice. You get you getting the real barrier. How much I have to go through. Be cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, be cool. He uh, he come over. He made up some some um, some excuse saying he had a stomachache an hour before the fight. Do you think he, he ba basically bottled it and didn't want uh, didn't want it? Time now to see Sheffield's kid Galahad in action. He should have been fighting Joseph Agbiko, but unfortunately the Ghanaian was taken sick today and Spaniard Leonel Hernandez has stepped up from the undercard. It's scheduled for eight rounds. Let's rejoin our commentators then, Ronald McIntosh and Richie Woodall. He's the former undefeated British Commonwealth Dressing room, you know what I expect of you. Follow my instructions at all times, defend yourselves at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. So we're underway. Change of opponent for both boxers. The man wearing red trunks trimmed with gold is Tid Galahad from Sheffield. First name Barry Awad. He's been a big admirer of his work. Very good technical. Boxer indeed, Kid Galahad, good punch picker, decent power. In his winning mentality, he says quite simply, there's nobody out there that can beat him. 21 fights undefeated, 12 of those wins coming inside the distance. This contest has not been not too far from being stopped here, Ronald. A couple of good shots that went in from Galahad here. And uh, the eyes, and there's some damage around the eyes and in the face of Hernandez. And the Lionel Hernandez corner retiring their boxer due to an injury to his eye. Therefore, your winner from Sheffield, Kid Galahad! 
first and foremost, congratulations for responding like a champion and, and you know, dealing with the situation the right way. Uh, I, I love your style. Um, I love the way that you, know, you don't depend on one punch. You depend on a variation of punches, to the body, to the head. Uh, you stay relaxed, you're not trying to load up, and that accumulates into a big punch where you look up and a guy just can no longer continue. So continue on to develop like you're developing, man. Uh, I'm really impressed. Who do, you, who do you want to fight? I want to fight anybody, you know. I want to fight. Selby? I'll fight Selby. Frampton? I'll fight Frampton. Any of them? Leo Santa Cruz. Call them out. Abinares. Call any them out. Of them. This is your if chance. They can, if, they, if they're watching this fight, any of you who want the fight, ITV can make it happen and we'll get on pay-per-view. Are you ready for a world title fight? You genuinely believe you're ready for that tilt? I'm ready for a world title shot. I'm sick and tired of playing, fighting these kind of guys. I want to fight the real deal. This is boxing, you know. Anything can happen. You always got to expect the unexpected in this game. That's how it goes, you know. You can't let things get to you. You know, you can't let things break you. You just have to, you know, just get on with it and just and just do your job and that's go in the ring and, and fight and win. In this game, you've got to be ready for anything, you know. If I could get in the ring and do something completely different, what you've never seen before, so you always got to be on your toes, you know, and you always got to be able to adapt to the situation. As a fight, when you get in the ring, you know, you can't really, um, you can't really fight on emotions, and you know, you got to go in there and do your job, you know. It is what it is, isn't it? That's how it, you know, boxing is boxing. You know, it's a business and a sport, but that's how it goes, you know. There's, uh, there's good things and there's bad, th the bad things, just like life. <laughs> As you sparring on today? Good man. As always. Never stop learning this game, we up and down. Uh, let's get the truth, Dom. How is his sparring really? Yeah, he can, he's getting to point A. He's had some good sparring over the last couple of weeks. He's coming to his end of his camp. And, you know, you, you know, Barry very rarely spars good a week before the fight. And that's how it is. You know, he's a little bit tired, he's a little bit stiff. Basically, just closing the ring down. This guy's fighting. He's a mover, he's a switcher. He's very, very tricky. And if you see what Barry was practicing today, what he's going to do in the fight, closing the guy down. Keep him on the ropes, don't let him move, don't let him fight in the middle of the ring. And, uh, you know, get your shots off. And basically, he was, you know, practicing that today, just controlling the fight where he wants him to be. Have you had to change anything in camp because the opponent's changed? Not really, because, you know, the other guy, the, uh, the Danish kid, was very awkward, long, tricky. Um, you know, this Mexican's a little bit tricky, he switches a lot. But basically, uh, sim similar, very similar. So, but Barry can adjust to any fighter anyway. We have, we've got all kinds of styles in this gym. And uh, as you saw in that sparring session, we had you know, a teeth in for a minute, a Z in for a minute, a teeth in for a minute, changing styles, changing tempo. Uh, you know, Barry's doing three minute rounds, these guys are having a minute break in between and, and being fresh for every minute. And you know, can, uh, can Barry breeze through the rounds. Rick, come here. You know who this guy is here. <laughs> This is the main man in Leeds. You go down Leeds, you tell him, you know Rick Manners. Any restaurant, any bar, you get free drink, free food. <laughs> I thought the man was Nick Manners in Leeds. Huh? Is he? Yeah, he's he's the man. <laughs> this man. Rick, just tell him who you married. Who I'm married? Yeah, who you married to. I'm married to Rebecca Margot. A very, rich. very rich Jewish girl. And he's black. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Life is good. And life is good. Very, very really good. Do you know why he's married a rich, a, a, a rich uh, Jewish white woman? Why is he done that? What do you think? <laughs> guess. You're right here again, you are. <laughs> You're savage. He's got the best lips in the world, Tanri. The juiciest lips. Is that right, Rick? People, people pay to buy them. <laughs> Women would die for them lips. Literally. I'm telling you now, I know when you said to me to give up their left leg with them lips. Is that right, Rick? I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> so how many eggs you have to go through a day? Five bites. Five bites. Mm -hmm. Sometimes two full, or one full. Oh, so you five. don't have the yolk? Six day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't really have yolk. I 
uh, raw grains, brown rice, chicken, turkey, a lot, a lot of fish, pork mostly, and salmon. Towards after five minutes, I'll have a bit of red meat, so I prefer to have fish or chicken to a fire. Don't really like it. Uh, it takes too long to digest. I'm around my way right now, you know. I feel good. Got to stay ready. We don't get ready, we stay ready. <laughs> opponent's now lost his license, your original opponent, Debbie Sealand. What's your reaction to that? Uh, you know, I'm a bit disappointed. It could have been a, a good fight between me and him, but it is what it is. The bull took his license off him, and you know, what can you do? You know, it is what it is. Everyone's got the downfalls, and I don't, I can't really come in on it because I'm not in that situation. I don't really know the ins and outs, you know. And uh, it's, it's just, you know, people make mistakes in life, and that's how it goes. But well, do you reckon to your replacement, Cajetino? Jose, he's a good Jose. kid, you know. He comes to fight, he's tricky. He's very durable. He's from Mexico, and you know, any kid who comes from Mexico, they all, they're born over there, they're. Uh, Eat the fight from young and uh, it's gonna be a good fight, interesting fight. So have we got some ideas yet, our colour? Um, what colour do you think? I was gonna say red. Red? Yeah. What kind of material do you want? Because you've had all sorts, you've had velvet. Then the last ones were nice. The red ones? Yeah. Yeah, they were nice. They were velvet. With that silk bit. The leopard. Yeah, the red. The same Most colour red. as last one. Okay. The velvet again, or do you want to go like a different type of What do you color? think? Up to you. What is it? What is leather, or there's like, you know, like the satin fabric? Sometimes I'd say shit, that's not really look that nice. I know and what you mean, you, but then you see it on the line. When you put when you put it together, it always looks nice. She always tells me to get these stuff, and like it doesn't look nice in it. And then when she puts them together, it always looks nice. Oh, was that the ones last time? That's last time. Oh no, no, I want to change that. One. You want to change it? Yeah. Okay. Well, even satin would be nice. Have some satin. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What are you think you're putting like? Because obviously the waistband can't be like that kind of. Yeah, we've done white spans in that before. It looks quite good, it's all you know, it's all crinkled up instead yeah. of like shiny. Yeah. Oh so and then you're gonna do Yeah, alright, then we'll do that then. Yeah? Yeah. We'll do that in white. I wanna bring white in down the side. Yeah. I'm just wondering whether we bring like it out. Do you know like come down and come out? Oh yeah. So basically like the same as last time, but then you're gonna Maybe not even go all the way, just kind of come into some sort of shape here. Yeah. And then, so obviously, side view. Okay. So, shall I colour this up? Oh, I'll do this. Yeah, just to show off. Then, if you want to swap. Why it, fight label? Because she's the best in the game, you know. You know, Sophie's um, imagination when it comes to shorts and skill set, you know, is. Uh, is unbelievable. She's the best in in my you know, in my opinion. She's the best shot maker in the world, and um, every time I've asked her to make something, you know, she when she's come back with the come back with the shots has always been better than I expected. What made you want to work with the boxing science team? I've been working with the boxing science for a very long time. You know, um, it's very grueling training there, and you know. They've, uh, you know, they've made me come on leaps and bounds, you know, physically. And, um, you know, they've got um, excellent training facilities there. They've got good training programs, you know, with there's a, a guy in there called Alan Ruddick and Dave Embro, who, you know, the founders of this, you know, Hallam University training facilities and like whatever it was. And you know now we've got a kid called Danny Wilson who trains in there who's got boxing science, and he's hungry, he's young, 
and he's always wanted to learn new things. This, this uh, tracks his velocity, his speed of the ball, that leads up to there. Can I explain it for a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Five, three, comes back, chest up. Good. Five, five, that's better. Yeah, good. Five, one. I think we're supposed to do like that. Like this. One, twelve. It's just, um, it's good, it's good for, you know, boxing conditioning and it's grueling. Yeah, would you recommend any other professionals like that's the place really you should go? Yeah, you know, if you if your conditioning's not the t the best, you know, if you you know if you're gassing after a couple of rounds or gassing after six rounds, you need to go over there. They'll sort you out. You know, they'll find your weak 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 points and work on it. champion you know determination in this game I've got determination I want to be a champion you know I've got things that I want to achieve in, in boxing and you know every day I get up on a train because I, I want to achieve them you know in this game you, you you have to have a bit of everything or you'll come up short and you know you need to have the skill you know, have to you have to have the will um, you got to have everything in this game I think I just you know I don't do anything exceptional. I probably do everything very well, but nothing exceptional. So if you have them lines on the floor for you, just jump on the hand like this. And shut the box. Yeah. Seen red <laughs> <and> <laughs> you see red in your hand. I had a lot of fun. Can I come in? Orange, yeah. Purple, black and blue. I can see the rainbow. Sing a rainbow, sing a rainbow too. See, you know, he's done with no, no, any, any problems. You get people, you see some people at, <coughs> at the football, at the boxing, and you don't know them. I understand that you're fighting Kid Galahad uh, on Saturday night. Um, what do you know about Kid Galahad? What do you know about Kid Galahad? Ah, I'm studying. He's a very good fighter. But he has deficiencies that we're going to take care of on Saturday night. He's seen him fight. He knows what he's like. He's good technically. But he's seen a few holes in his armor which he's going to try and, and take care of. How's your preparation been um, for this fight? How has your preparation been for this fight? Ah, very intense, very fuerte. Este, trabajamos duro. Very hard. Para para esta pelea. And we've worked very hard for this fight, knowing what kind of an opponent he is. 
up on. Let's go on to our first live contest, which is going to feature the undefeated Kid Galahad, who I'm sure fancies a shot at Lee Selby's IBF World Crown if he can take the vacant IBF Intercontinental featherweight belt later on this evening. His Mexican opponent, Jose Cajetano, has gone the distance with some pretty impressive fighters, including Leo Santa Cruz and the late Alejandro Gonzalez Jr. He was actually stopped in nine rounds by Scott Quigg in December, but that's the only time that he's been stopped in 26 contests. So, time for the first time this evening to join our commentary team, which is the former super middleweight world champion Richie Woodall and Ronald McIntosh, and they'll be your voices after our MC for this evening, Phil Seymour. Welcome to the SSE Arena Wembley. Would you please welcome to the ring, Kid Gallagher! This is Caroline for Parks and Sports. With me, I got the new IBF Intercontinental Featherweight Champion, Kit Galahad. You put on a fantastic show. Um, what do you think about your fight? First of all, I want to thank God for the opportunity for giving me today. And second of all, I want to thank, you know, my Qatari people, Sheikh Tamim, you know, Brendan Ingle, Dominic Ingle, John Ingle, Greg Marriott over here, all my media team, Terrence, you know, I want to thank everybody in the Ingle gym, everybody at Hallam University, Carl Lukak, you know, for getting me in this position and keeping on top of me and making me stay focused. I'd like to thank my mum and dad for supporting me all the way. And um, today's performance was a, it was a very good performance, you know. I went and they did what I had to do. I actually wanted to stop them later, you know, in the 12th round, when they get 12 rounds with my belt, and then put it really on them in the 12th and get him out. But the referee stopped that after 10. Were you surprised the moment it was stopped? Because earlier on, he was in much more trouble. Yeah, you know, I, I think in the... 9th and 10th, I just took my gas, I the foot off the gas a tiny bit, you know, went back into first gear, wanted to break him down, you know, because I was getting to him mentally and physically was just getting on top, getting on top, you know, and I was waiting for the later rounds, 11th and 12th, to really give him them, them um, sleepers. Scott Quake stopped him in round, in round 9, you stopped him in round 10. Um, before the fight, he said that Scott Quake is a much harder fight for him. Yeah. What do you think he's saying now? Best call and, and then change rules and ask him. You know, ask him what was an easier fight and what was a harder fight. You know, um, Scott Quigg, did, he, did Scott Quigg look better than me doing what I did against him? You know, Scott Quigg had a life and death fight with him up to the ninth round until he caught him, you know. And I went in there, beat him up systematically, broke him down mentally. And then, you know, the referee got on there and jumped in before he got seriously hit. You can go out and box, fight, whatever you want to call it. Go to school. The white English, in my opinion, are very, very clever the way they've done it. And over the years, look at the mix here. I went years and years ago to box in Nigeria. I used to collect stamps and I found it fascinating people in the history of the countries. So running the boxing, sport and music brings everybody together. I'm nearly there when I feel it. The lights there, yeah, I seen it. 
Stepping in the ring with Kid G, the opponent couldn't believe it Team Gala had been putting hours in fight night, you can't last around with him And the other fighters looking at his shenna like, yo, please follow the tower loop Yeah, it's mad, right, left, hooked in the jab Kid G, yeah, is the champ, and I swear he don't ramp No days off in the camp, no days off in the champ And he's quick with his hands, how what you don't understand And yeah, we go hard up on this side The stars are made up in the sixth side And we're trying to take this worldwide like 22 and know that I like, you don't know that should have been more, but fighters did it show But there's no hiding, seen the contrast and the signing So yeah, now it just looks like it's a 15th of July team.